Trade Media. Well, those of you who know me personally, you know what this car is. This is the first one that started everything for me in the muscle car world. We had other cars in the family, but this is the one that, the first car I restored, 1973, Roadrunner 344 speed, bench seat, pistol grip. It is no longer mine. I sold it seven years ago, but the owners now, same people that I sold it to, were super gracious to let me come out and take a video of it. I'm gonna get it outside, we're gonna go through it. This car, I know every square inch, I know every bolt, I know everything about this car, because it was a 12 year obsession to put this thing together. And uh, I hope you enjoy the video as uh, as we take this, as I take you through this. So, uh, what we got, 1973 Plymouth Roadrunner, and I, I, like I said, I'll get you outside. Yellow, black stripe, now this car started life as a light green, and I'll show you the fender tag after, light green, dark green interior, white stripe, like this big guy on the side, the big longitudinal stripe over the top, but it was a hood delete stripe. There was no white stripe on the hood, but it had the 340 call out stickers on. Now this hood, 73 and 74 only, is called the power bulge hood, okay? Now, how you can tell a 73 and 74 apart in the hoods is the grills on the uh, on the hood. This grill here, that's for your washer squirters to get out to the windshield. On 74, these are gone, and they're on the inside of the hood, and they spray out. They're hidden. So this is, and again, I've learned all this as I was restoring this car so many years ago. All right. All right. So I know, like, again, I'll tell you what I know of this car, which is most of it. Re-chrome front and rear bumpers. And again, this is 73 bumperette. 73 has the chrome piece between the bumperette and the bumper in 74. Most of them are a solid full rubber bumper. Some early model 74s do have this version as well, but most of the 74s I've ever seen um, come with uh, the full rubber uh, bumperette. Now this... All these stripes in this car are reflective. So if you're looking at it when you're watching the video and something is odd or something is off about it, it could be just how as it's coming off my uh, recording here. But when you take a picture of it and there's any kind of darkness and the flash goes off, these stripes look silver. So yeah, this is a reflective. This is a dual chrome mirror car. And again, I'm going to get this car outside in a second. I haven't seen this car in seven years. I haven't touched it or anything till right now. I added the tack. This uh, changed the interior color to black when I painted it yellow. That is a reproduction tack, but everything else is correct as, as I, when I purchased it. It even smells like it was before. So there's our unique switches there for wipers and the blue uh, inlet there on the lights. So yeah, bench seat, four speed, one of 956 made in 73 all right well the owners let me said i could take it for a drive and i'm not even going to i can't i am going to fire it up i am going to back it out because i need to do a severe a severe awesome walk around and i'll explain all the rest of the doodads and what you majiggets of this car but it's just as I left it, they have left it just perfect. So, first time firing it up here in seven years, just as I remember it. 
Awesome. All right, so what I built here back in the day, it's not numbers matching on the engine. It does have the numbers matching four-speed manual transmission in it. It has the correct radiator. Everything else is correct, but the block is a 73 date-coded block. It is not the numbers matching block. When I purchased this car in 2000, it had a 318 in it. So then I was working at a Chrysler dealership, so I ordered everything from the performance catalog. The valve covers, this is a six pack, I'll take the air cleaner off later. So three two barrel carburetors, Hollies as, as it would have been. Now in 73, you couldn't get a six pack 340 car. Now because it wasn't numbers matching and it really, uh, again, in my young youngness, the color of this car, and let's bring this fender tag over here because I might as well get into this. This car, J, F1. That is a very unique green. So, no vinyl roof, which is why it's JF1, JF1. C is a Canadian car. So, now the JF1 of 1973 Roadrunners, 2% of them were this color. Now, I replicated Daisy Duke's car, which Again, I didn't know any different, but so what we got here, JF1, JF1, B2, F6, that's the green interior with the bench seat. JF8 is the door panel color. It was built uh, February 10th of 73. Now, okay, so uh, M21, M26, M85, I uh, have to go through those. N41 dual exhaust, N42 um, chrome tips with the machine gun tips. Now this one specifically, because it was a machine gun tip car. So what I had done, because I made this, this engine is like 10 and a half to one compression, nine and three quarters maybe. I never did the actual math, but you need to run premium in this bad boy for sure. It's got oodles of power. So what I did is I put TTI headers on it and I've had this engine apart a couple of times and now this configuration that it is is the best it's ever been. It's a roller camshaft with roller 1.5 ratio rockers, TTI headers to three inch exhaust all the way back. And then there's a guy in Toronto. Let's just have a, a walk back here. A guy in Toronto years back made these three inch machine gun tips. So this car is running three inch exhaust from the headers all the way back. And these cars are big enough underneath that you do have room. So this is a 355 rear end gear with a limited slip differential. I mean, everything was new when I'd gone through it. I have to look at the miles, but I bet you there's not 6,000 miles on this car since I've been, had it done. The wheels, the rims, sorry, are centerline daggers. I custom ordered those from centerline directly. And the tires are P55, 65, R16s. And again, 11 inch rear, it's actually got the 11 inch up, uh, heavy duty upgraded rear brake. Uh, non rear defrost car, but it did have the rear speaker option. Again, the strobe stripe across. So what I tried to do is replicate Daisy Duke's car. You know, so many people, they're replicating the General E which, I mean, that's an awesome, you know, 69 Charger. There's no, no doubt about it. But I could never afford, I could never afford the 69 Charger. So I moved to the Roadrunner, which the power bulge hood, when you're sitting in this car, I'll take a, you know, I'll, I'll extend the video into the, uh, into the inside when I'm sitting in it. It is just really, really slick. So again, bench seat. Now I have... When I did this, and I'm sure it's the same right there, I hidden a CD player, and that's a JVC Chameleon, and I just always like these CD players. So we hid it in the glove box. Now, when the car's running, you can't hear nothing. So really not, you know, it, it's, it's there, but you can't hear anything, <laughs> no matter what speakers you put in here. The car is just that loud, but that's what makes it so awesome. So... Anyway, so yeah, with this pistol grip, with the bench seat, you get the bigger pistol grip, which 
again, is very specific. It's got to be a bench four speed to have that style of pistol grip. And initially, that's what sold me on the car, really. The very first moment when I seen it, it was really rough. But the uh, I needed rear quarter panels. I got those out of, uh, uh, sorry, Desert Valley Auto Parts um, before they were on TV. So these quarter panels came from there. Again, just, I have to give a huge shout out when I had this car done, I had this done with, uh, again, my, my, uh, my buddy in crime with muscle cars, Bob Southoff at Radical Restorations in Cadogan, Alberta. He, uh, he brought my vision to, to life. So this isn't a Chrysler color either. This is a DuPont color. This color is called HH24. I just picked it out of a book. Um, this is the car I learned all the do's and don'ts of life. This car got awfully expensive in a hurry because I did some things wrong, but I didn't know any different. I know so much now. The first, I actually had this car bodywork done once and it wasn't ever finished, finished properly. But I spent a lot of money and I won't name everything, but the car was in trouble and I had to, I came to a crossroad in life. It's either, well, I get rid of the car, I crush the car or get it fixed. And that's when I met Bob and Bob helped me save it. I had these, this was still part of, you could replicate these, so I, I actually, I might actually have the original one I cut out of the door. I have to look, if, if I do, I'll have to give it to hell. It's got the Canada sticker on it because it was a Canadian car and the fender tag, it had the C. So this car, I got it out of Yorkton, Saskatchewan, and I bought it from the second and fourth owner. So he had it when he was a second owner, and he bought it back, and, he, and then he was a fourth owner. Um, and then I had purchased it in May of 2000, I believe. So we have the hidden wiper blades underneath. And like I mentioned before, we have the reflective stripes. Now, again, you're not going to see with the way the sun is now. You're not going to see that, which is okay. But So yeah, 26-inch Rad Factory, so it's got the max cooling option. Uh, bugs, but that's good. I'm I'm happy they're using it. So it actually has the overflow tank as well, and that's a factory original overflow tank. It does have the charcoal canister because it would have emissions control already. Now, what I did is I ran the uh, overflow from the carburetor uh, to there is what I did. And uh, let's uh, let's pop the top here. Darren just stopped by and says, "Hey, make sure you take it for a drive." I'm like, "No, I can't take it for a drive." <laughs> If I take it for a drive, we're gonna have to do some dealing. There's no dealing happening today, so. So there's the three two barrel carburetors. <clears throat> the air cleaner lid that I just removed, that's a uh, house of colors. Again, I don't know, I think it's somewhere in the early 2000s I would have had this painted. Okay. So 73 already had electronic ignition. So I ran a chrome box. Obviously, it's the same one that I had installed before. So we have a chrome box, electronic ignition. That's an NOX filter, I think. I never did use it, never did hook it up. Uh, voltage regulator, dual ballast resistor because of the year. It has dual ballast resistor. Now, because I put the six pack on, the coils mounted differently than, uh, than a typical 340. But again, it's it would look on the top end like the, like the TA version. Uh, it's got a hot air choke because it's a six pack. There's the other mirror. And what I'm gonna do on this one, yeah, it's identical, just as I left it, just, it's a little bittersweet moment here, but I'm glad they're enjoying it, that's for sure. All right, it's parked, it's back. I only had one, one request from the owners, they take it for a drive. But I have to bring it back. So this is my video proof that I brought it back. So I want to make sure I send out a, a huge appreciative thank you to the owners of this. Again, I'm going to keep all the names discreet like I always do. But I really do truly let, appreciate you allowing me to do what I need for this video. Show everyone this is like, this is what started everything. Anybody who knows me or is gonna gonna get to know me in the very near future, muscle cars are a very big part of my life. I just love muscle cars. Pick your brand, 
I do like Dodge and Plymouth. There's no doubt. There's no denying what the what the majority of the videos are at the moment. But I am going to get I am going to get some other makes and models. This Roadrunner specifically, this decal. When I first bought the car, I cut the decal off because it was wrecked or whatever. I cut the decal off and I had a tattoo designed around that decal, and I had it done. Oh, very short thereafter since when I bought the car. So I got the tattoo. Don't have the car, but that's all right. Roadrunners are still in, still in, uh, still in my blood, and it's being very well taken care of and appreciated by the owners here now. And the owner, the the husband's uh, cousin, I think it's cousin, has a Roadrunner like this. I believe it's a seventy three three forty four speed. Believe it or not, blue and white. So at some point, I am going to try and do that car as well. But I can't only fit so much. In a day so here we are I'm gonna close the door and uh, maybe see it in another seven years fantastic all right I'm out please share like comment Goodbye. All right, so one last thing with this uh, 73 Roadrunner that I wanted to make sure I got out there. When I owned the car, uh, a place I worked in Saskatoon, my boss's mom was uh, painting at the time. So anyway, um, yeah, she made this. I think she put Bruno on. Yeah, she put Bruno on the elevator. But yeah, so she painted this for me, framed it, everything, and gave it to me, uh, right, I don't, I don't think I was done the car just yet, but anyway, so yeah, Hilda, um, Hilda Hackett was, was the, the awesome artist here who painted me this, so I've, I've kept this obviously forever, and it's not going anywhere fast. The second piece that's beside this, this is the first air cleaner lid that I had on that Roadrunner when I was building it, so a good friend of mine, his buddy, um, we're going to call him Kenny, he was a magician with airbrushing. He did this in a half an hour, off and on. With, with You take the drying time out of it, it's like a half an hour. So 340, six pack. And I had the two lids made. So the lid that was on the car, that was the first lid that I had that came with the six pack setup that I bought from uh, the Chrysler dealership. Then I bought another lid because, uh, again, uh, he had this awesome idea and I would let him obviously play. But this I kept. I couldn't. Uh, yeah, Kenny was just, he just wanted to play with it. I'm like, do whatever you want. Let her rip. So the one thing on that engine that I didn't mention, so yes, the bottom end is a date coded correct 73, but I put a steel crank in it. I built that car, that engine, to take a 300 shot of nitrous. So it's got the pistons that can handle it. The cylinder heads are Edelbrock aluminum heads. I think oh, we got 64 cc chambered heads, I believe. Hardened push rods, the whole schmear. It is the nicest sounding car to date in, in the car I've ever been a part of. It's just unreal. So again, yeah, this is... Just the two other pieces. This is at home here. I am going to show you some of the, the room in another time. I do have a, a car slash kiss room if you see that in the corner. But anyway, that's the that's the Roadrunner. Last of the Roadrunner. Actually, there isn't. There is a hidden gem here. Hang on. Hold the phone. There is a hidden gem. I had a model built. Or not had. I built it. So when I paint, when I had the car painted, uh, there was leftover paint, and this model is painted with the exact color. And a friend of uh, mine was able to get decals cut for because when this came out, there was no decals at the time. So yeah, I did get a chance. I do have a, a little replica, I guess, of the car. I put the spoiler on it and everything. Yeah, it's a pistol grip. So yeah, it's been in this case, yeah, since 
the second I built it. Anyway, all right. Take care. Bye for now. Make sure you subscribe and send it around to all your buddies, please.